When it comes to approaching a patient with low back pain using the epilogical approach, the first and the foremost thing to do would be to create a list of probable diagnoses or differential diagnoses in an organized manner. In this mind map, we've used acute and chronic back pain as two categories, and then they are further subdivided into smaller categories. The next step would be to uh, make sure that we address urgent and emergent situations. So in this case, we uh, the, the differential diagnosis which are life-threatening or organ-threatening uh, in, an, in, an, uh, in an immediate future are quadra equina, triple A rupture, and spinal abscess. Correlated to that or associated with that, the sim with these diagnoses are the symptoms and signs which we should immediately look at. And what are those? Abnormal vital signs, for example, hemodynamic instability for patients who have triple A rupture acutely deteriorating neurological function or loss of bowel and bladder control in patients with quadra equina and fever in patients with spinal abscess. After we've quickly looked at all of these things, we know that the patient is not in an urgent or emergent situation, we can move forward. Next is uh, the weighing process where we uh, ask the high yield questions and what are those? Uh, uh, those two questions are duration of pain and location of pain. So with that, we can determine that the patient's pain is either acute or chronic and, and we can make a narrower list of the differential diagnosis. We should also keep in mind that the, the categories of acute and chronic back pain are not necessarily totally separate from each other. There's a lot of overlap. And sometimes what happens is patients who have acute back pain, they can move on to develop chronic back pain, unfortunately, and uh, even if they have the same diagnosis. And patients who have chronic back pain sometimes present early on in the disease process such that we may, uh, we may be fooled thinking that this is actually an acute back pain problem. So we should keep all of that in mind. So uh, after we ask the high yield questions, we move on to the medium yield questions, which refer to the salient features in front of all the uh, major differential diagnoses. There are quite a few differential diagnoses for back pain, so we don't need to get intimidated. It's uh, helpful to remember that the vast majority of patients with acute back pain uh, basically are suffering from top three differential diagnoses, and those are somatic dysfunction, lumbar sprain or strain, and intervertebral disc herniation. So these are the most common, and after we evaluated the patient and if things point to these diagnoses, we can say these, this is the diagnosis. But if things don't fit, then we, we can start thinking about some of the other less common causes. We The questions that we can ask from the patient are, if we are thinking about intervertebral disc herniation, we can, uh, we can ask about radiation of pain into one or the other leg. If we are thinking about lumbar sprain or strain, we can ask about uh, recent trauma or overuse, or we can ask questions on the lines of uh, patient's work uh, uh, or posture, uh, which basically makes us think that they are at risk of developing strain and strain off and on. Uh, if we are thinking about uh, 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 fracture, we can start looking at whether the patient is at risk for fracture, for example, if they are elderly, if they've used steroids in the past, uh, or if they just had recent trauma. Um, and then, of course, we already addressed the uh, life-threatening conditions, which are triple A rupture, quad one, and spinal abscess. Next, we move on to the chronic back pain category, where we have multiple differential diagnoses. The good thing is that at least the top three of those differential diagnoses are so close to each other clinically that we don't need to differentiate among them on bedside because those are radiologic diagnoses and they have identical symptoms and signs on physical exam and history. So what are those? Those are spondylosis, spondylolysis, and spondylolisthesis. These are the patients who are going to basically present with chronic back pain, uh, sometimes radiating and sometimes not radiating to the, to the legs, depending upon how much the, uh, the nerves are involved. Um, these patients are basically presenting to us because they have an underlying degenerative disc disease or degenerative arthritis of the spine, and that is their radiologic diagnosis. The caveat here is that quite a few patients at an older age, after, especially after the age of 50, uh, if their back has not been very healthy, they do develop uh, uh, degenerative disc disease or degenerative arthritis of the spine. So if we do an MRI of young, of healthy 40 to 50 or older patients, uh, about 80% of the time we'll see some degenerative arthritis. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind because not all the time these, are, these changes are going to result in back pain and not all the time these back pains are going to be associated with these changes. So keep, we need to keep that differentiation in mind.
The next would be spondylo, uh, uh, the next would be uh, uh, ankylosing spondylitis. That is where the patient has uh, chronic back pain, but in addition to that, the medium yield related question or the salient feature which differentiates it from the other causes would be that they will have a lot of stiffness in the low back. And whenever they exercise or move or so anything that heats up their back, for example, swimming, they will feel better. Uh, plus, they will have a family history, most likely, because there is a genetic uh, component to it. Patients with uh, spinal stenosis would have low back pain, which uh, most likely is going to radiate to both legs. So that is how we differentiate it. And uh, there is a phenomenon called shopping cart syndrome, where they feel better when they are actually bending over. So we can ask that question from the patient. Uh, patients with uh, SI joint pain should have point tenderness at that joint. Patients with facet arthritis should also have uh, with uh, tenderness at that area. So these are the musculoskeletal causes of uh, low back pain and the next three are basically outside of the musculoskeletal system. So one is for male, one is for female and then there is multiple myeloma which is the unfortunate malignancy. Uh, patients with uh, who have uh, um, uh, the low back pain arising from prostatitis or prostate hypoplasia or prostate cancer, they should have prostate related symptoms. So these men uh, should have urinary symptoms. We, if we are suspecting it, the medium yield questions on those lines should be accordingly. Then the patients uh, who are uh, female patients who have low back pain and we are suspecting uterine uh, fibroids or uterine abnormality, it can even be malignancy. We can uh, ask about abnormal menstrual periods. These patients are typically going to be over the age of 40 but under the age of 65. Patients who have um, uh, multiple myeloma, we need to keep in mind that along with severe low back pain, they should have weakness, they should have anemia, and their back pain should just uh, kind of uh, be more uh, out of proportion to what we are suspecting on history and physical exam based upon the risk factors. So uh, never miss that diagnosis. There is a mnemonic to memorize, which is CRAB, although it does not necessarily apply to um, to clinical evaluation because we can't always see all the features of CRAB in, when, at bedside. So that is basically stands for uh, calcium, hypercalcemia, which we can't see on the on uh, symptoms or signs, but we can keep that in mind when we are doing the lab testing. Uh, R is for renal uh, dysfunction, A is for anemia, and these two also we can't really do on bedside, and then B is for bone or bone pain. So keep this mnemonic in mind, especially when we are answering questions on, uh, on the exams, but keep multiple myeloma in mind when we are evaluating the patients. So anyone with low back pain, which is severe, uh, along with that they have uh, bone pain or joint pain, and then they also have anemia, we should think about CRAB, uh, along with weight loss, of course. Uh, now, after the physical, after the symptoms, we do the physical exam, and which basically uh, should be complete and comprehensive because we need to do a thorough musculoskeletal exam. Uh, and if we are thinking or suspecting a diagnosis which which is outside of the musculoskeletal system, we should do an uh, exam of that organ also. For example, if we are thinking about uterine fibroids, we should look for the uh, for the pelvic exam. If we are thinking about prostate, we should do the rectal exam. Uh, the next is imaging or lab find, lab tests, and those again we should order only if we are suspecting particular diagnosis. So typically, outside of those three top differentials for acute back pain, patients will require some sort of imaging or test. But if you're thinking about those top three, which are going to be 80% of the uh, causes of low back pain in an acute setting, then we don't need to do any imaging or test because. Uh, those are all clinical diagnoses, so we should be good steward of the resources and make sure that we don't unnecessarily order all kinds of tests. So hopefully with this, we should be able to make the uh, diagnosis accurately, efficiently, and logically. Thank you.